dead battered in back and front sacrificed in the prime of his life intestines pulled out in february 2003 mick burke from cloney cavan was working on a tram screen in beliver bordemona works when he found something he didn't know what it was it turned out to be a body can you imagine finding a body in a piece of peat the head uh, the upper body and the abdomen uh, were in a good state of preservation this was a bog body this was not the first bog body discovered there have been discovering bog bodies throughout northern europe for the last hundreds and thousands of years in 1983 a uh, human head, skull, was discovered at Lindau Bog in Cheshire in England. Uh, this uh, police initially uh, thought that it belonged to a woman who had disappeared uh, in 1960, 23 years uh, earlier. Her husband happened to be in prison uh, on another charge. Uh, his name was Peter Reindbart and he boasted that he had killed his wife and buried her in the bog. When he was confronted with the discovery of the skull, he confessed and a trial began. The trial was well underway when the carbon dating came back for the skull and it dated the skull back to 2000 years ago. However, uh, Peter had already confessed and he was convicted solely on uh, his confession. His wife's body was never found. The skull was given the name Lindau Woman. Bog bodies are generally named after the places in which they are found. About a year later, not far away from the discovery of the skull, they discovered a body, uh, a male body. The local uh, hospital named uh, him uh, Pete Marsh. Uh, however, his proper name is Lindau Man, and he's the premier bog body uh, in uh, Britain today. The uh, Cloney Caffin Man dates back to about uh, uh, 300 uh, BC, so he's over uh, 2,000 years old. He was uh, appeared to be initially a very small man, but uh, recent indications seem to suggest that he was uh, ta taller than first thought, and that he had shrunk uh, while uh, being in uh, in the bog. Uh, he was about 25 years of, uh, of age, and his diet uh, was rich in plant materials and vegetables. And this would suggest that uh, he was murdered uh, late into the summer because uh, in the winter people ate meat at this at this time. He had uh, quite a distinctive uh, hairstyle, uh, shaved here at the front and shaved around the back and then quite long hair which may have been uh, tied up on top of his uh, top of his head. Uh, he used uh, um, a, a hair gel uh, made from pine resin and uh, some of this uh, resin came from uh, the Pyrenees on the borders of uh, France and, and Spain. So 2,300 years ago there was people from here in Beliver uh, uh, dealing and trading uh, with the Medi Mediterranean. The uh, state pathologist, Mary Cassidy's post-mortem revealed that he had uh, died uh, from uh, trauma, uh, blunt trauma, perhaps uh, an axe to the head. Uh, there was one hit in the front of the head, one hit in the back of the head, and then one uh, right across the nose, which would have crushed and uh, broken the nose. Now, he might have been unconscious from uh, the first blow, but uh, we don't know. Then his nipples were pulled out and uh, sliced off, and his entrails. Uh, his uh, there was a large cut across his his stomach, so his entrails may have uh, been pulled out. Why was he killed, or why was he sacrificed? We don't know. 
a sacrifice is generally for uh, an offering up to the gods uh, to, for help with something. Uh, we know around this period there was particularly bad weather, uh, but uh, he was one of the elite. He was uh, well looked after and uh, well cared for, so there seemed to be plenty of plenty of food. Um, he could well have uh, been uh, uh, marking a border uh, between one uh, one tribe and another, and certainly today here we are on the borders of uh, Westmead and and Mead, so the border still uh, exists today. Today, uh, Cloney Cavan Man uh, lies in the National Museum in Dublin, together with uh, three other uh, bog bodies, and uh, the display is called. Uh, kingship and sacrifice.